So hello and welcome, I'm Frederick Dunn, and this is a special episode of The Way to Be related to backyard beekeeping equipment. And today, we're talking about pollen traps. Sometimes you need to put a pollen trap on your hive if you want to collect the pollen, and I'm doing it for a very specific purpose, but I thought, since I've used a couple of different designs, that I thought I would share with you what the benefits of those two designs are. And this particular wooden pollen trap that sits right on the landing board of your standard Langstroth hive comes from the Blythewood Bee Company. I paid full price for it. This is not a promotion. So there's the pollen that we collected. Look at all the different colors. We have some yellow pollen there. Goldenrod is starting up and some of that can actually be from corn. So I collect it. I put it on sheets of paper. I mark the date of collection and then I roll it up, put it in a plastic test tube, put the cap on it. And guess what I do then? I freeze it. That's right. Put it in the old freezer because that's the best way to preserve the goodness in your pollen. And then this of course is a removable tray all made out of wood that uh, the pollen was in and then you can just put it right back on the hive. So I'm going to show you two different designs today and I'm going to explain what I like and don't like about them. So this one you pull the tray out and uh, the bees can come and go but once they're habituated to going through the pollen trap which is that plastic piece there uh, they tend to go through that even when the tray is removed and this tray I want you to notice is completely enclosed it has a little grip handle on the leading edge of it and the bees use it fairly easy. Look at all the pollen going in. And this looks like it's pretty consistent color-wise. And I'm going to show you where I think this pollen is coming from. And it might surprise you. So anyway, the bees go through. They can't fit through the hole with the pollen on their corbicula the way they normally would. So when they go through the hole, it scrapes it off. It falls through a tray. Through a screen into a tray. This is another hive adjacent to the one and uh, that the pollen trap is on and it shows that the bees are getting lots of pollen. In fact, most of the hives in this apiary seem to be getting pollen from the same area. So we have to do slow motion. We're showing a little bit of uh, the configurations here, the way the bees are flying, but I want you to see the proximity to a cornfield. So what's going on there with the cornfield? That's right, the bees are getting pollen from the corn that right now is tasseling. Now the corn doesn't need the honeybees, but the honeybees are going to exploit any resource that they can find and they're getting it from the corn. Now is that a concern? I don't know. But I'm collecting the pollen, I'm freezing it, marking it, dating it, and we're gonna ship it off and get the pollen tested to see what kind of pesticides might be coming into my hive and being fed to the brood, that's right bee production. So when they have developing brood, while it's in the open state, the larva state, it's being fed protein that we call bee bread and it comes from pollen. So it's going to be very interesting and I hope uh, you'll see the follow-up for that later on this year or early next year because we're sending out the samples. So here we are, laying board activity, pretty standard. Uh, you should be watching your own bees this time of year. This is August. And uh, a lot of pollen coming in is pretty standard because they're brooding up because we are at the leading edge of a big nectar flow here. So why would you collect pollen? Well, some people use real bee pollen to make pollen patties and things like that to feed back to the bees. The brown and tan pollen in here likely comes from white clover. And uh, the yellow, of course, I'm thinking comes from corn and the goldenrod is opening up. So this is the second pollen trap design that I'm taking a look at and I'm going to tell you ahead of time for those of you who are in a big hurry I'm not a huge fan of this plastic uh, pollen trap and of course I'm not just going to tell you that I'm going to show you why I kind of don't like it it has a uh, insert here but they put all kinds of holes and vents in the tray that collects the pollen and that can actually be a problem I'm going to explain why also You'll notice that uh, the pollen traps between the two are different. The one on the left has round pollen trap holes in it. The one on the right, they're a little bit uh, rectangular, even kind of pyramid shaped a little bit. But once you put it on the hive, and of course I had to screw it on the front, it's plastic, it's lightweight. In fact, that tray comes out very easily. 
Uh, so I had to mount this. This is on a 10 frame hive. They do make an 8 and a 10 frame version, but I'm comparing only 10 frame versions. I did like this hole on the sides. That's called their drone escape because drones can't pass through the pollen trap. Uh, they would, of course, while the pollen trap is in place, just be trapped inside or stuck outside, unable to get in. And if you leave these on for a long period of time, you may actually find dead drones inside. But with the drone escape on the sides, the smarter drones will be able to get out. And watch the bees that have the pollen on their hind legs going through the openings here. A lot of them are going right through, and guess what's not happening? Most of the pollen is not coming off of their legs. Also, this causes confusion for your bees. That's why you can leave it in the pass-by mode. In other words, fold this grid up and the bees can come and go without interacting with the pollen trap. But watch the bees going through the holes, if you can see them. Not much pollen's coming off. Now, I will say it did trap a bunch of pollen, so I'm not gonna suggest that it doesn't work at all, but it is far less effective. A lot of bees are getting through without scraping the pollen off. And of course here through the gap in the back. Now that's not necessarily a design flaw. I could have pushed this up tighter against the hive. But for me personally, I don't mind that uh, some of the pollen is not taken off of the bees. I don't want their brood production to go to an all stop. We just want to collect some pollen. Some people eat pollen and they use it in a lot of different ways. Some people use it as part of apiculture where they're using pollen to help them with allergies and things like that. And uh, of course, super slow motion. You probably wanted some jazz for this. And it just shows the elegance of the bee flying through the air, coming in with pollen on its corbicula. Sometimes they run into each other and I don't know, that's about enough of that. So we get back into the review. And here they are, they're clustered at all different uh, places trying to get into the hive, bypassing the pollen trap. That's normal, why wouldn't they? Look at that one going through right in the center. See the pollen on its legs? And the pollen goes through with the bee, just fine. So they spread out all over it, but there's another problem with the plastic pollen trays on these traps that I noticed, and that is this. The pollen is accessible to the bees. Not only that, I don't know if you've ever smelled a collection of fresh pollen. The bees that are collecting it, the foragers, are putting nectar on the pollen to make it stick together. The pollen smells sweet. It smells like honey in some cases because the bees are taking honey with them to groom back the pollen and collect it and bring it back to the hive. So this means you could all, almost kick off a robbing activity. They are sticking their tongues through these openings, including the openings in the bottom, and they're licking the pollen. And in fact, they were able to lick some of the pollen out. Now bees won't collect pollen that's fallen off the legs of another bee and use it as bee bread. But because it has nectar in it, they will lick it and break it apart and try to get as much of the nectar as they possibly can. So we had a lot of bees collecting on the outside of that tray because of these vent holes. Now, that was unexpected for me. I didn't understand why they had all the vent holes in it in the first place, maybe in case it rained so it wouldn't be trapped in there. But uh, I'm not a fan at all of having all these holes in the tray. Uh, also, we have kind of a robbing situation going on because the goldenrod is just now starting to open. We do have a lot more foragers than we have forage. So whenever there's sweetness exposed, and I could smell this in the air, so I know the bees could, uh, you risk getting attention to these hives. But of course, you're collecting pollen from your strongest colonies. Let's get inside and just reevaluate here. So now we're back at the kitchen table, and here's what I think. By the way, I do have a fix for this tray, and I'll show you that at the end. I like that it has a drone escape. Okay, I like that it's plastic. You can wash it, you can clean it up easily. And uh, it does have a bypass. It's got an okay design. You do have to screw it onto the face of your hive because it's too lightweight. I don't understand why they put all these holes in the bottom and in the front. This pollen trap is by far my favorite. It's wood, it's gonna last a long time. You can set it on the landing board. You don't have to use the screws. Just the physical weight of it will hold it there. And you can leave it there for a long time and just remove the drawer or install the drawer whenever you decide you need some pollen. 
Now the plastic one too. You can put it in bypass mode. You can leave that on your hive for a long time. You're going to need screws to attach it. The removable trays, the plastic one needs work. You're going to want to fill those holes and I'll explain how I do that at the very end here. So remember it gets about 50% of the performance that the wooden one does. So this has to do with the size of the pollen trap itself, the holes that the bees have to go through. And uh, we know that it's 50% less effective because within a day of the other ones being on and colonies that are of equal size, and I did test more than one of them. I don't just put one on one hive to see how it works. Uh, this one lets a lot of pollen through, which actually may benefit you. If you're a backyard beekeeper, you only want some of the pollen, maybe you forgot and you left it on, then this is going to let a lot of the pollen through, but you risk kicking off a robbing interest in the hive that this unit is on because that pollen and the honey and nectar that's associated with collecting the pollen puts a scent in the air that other hungry bees will come after. So I see that as a drawback, and uh, it does have a watershed on top. It's also got this little beveled entrance cover on the tray that should also shed water away. So I can't think that all of these holes are there to allow water out, because if you got water in there anyway, it's going to break down your pollen, and you're not going to be able to keep very much of it. And when I open up the bottom, the bees were able to lick the pollen through those holes, and I mean draw it out. So the wooden one is a very simple design. I suppose those that really need to sanitize something would find the wood to be less appealing for that reason. But uh, if you get one of these, this one uh, has lasted me for many years. I think it's going to last many more years and is by far my favorite small scale pollen collection system. So uh, what do you think about that? And this also has the, you know, it's got the drone escape through the sides here in the back. It doesn't keep 100% of the bees, although this one is much more secure. And if you've got the side pieces on your landing board, those drone openings on the side may not be available. That's why you're going to want to keep this on and uh, in the pollen collection mode only for a few hours, maybe a day. I don't personally like leaving them on full time. This looks like number eight screen. And uh, it's not corroding. As I mentioned, this has been out in the weather. You can see it's been propolized a little bit by the bees. And uh, this has been around a while. You can get these inserts, by the way, separately. So if you're making your own pollen trap of some kind, they're very inexpensive and you can find them just by doing a search. So I do want to seal up this tray and uh, I'll give you my final word. I think you know it already. I need the Blythewood Bee Company's uh, pollen trap. And by the way, I did searches. I could not find this trap anywhere else. So if you go to the Blythewood Bee Company and you order one of these and tell them that I sent you, you're going to pay the same as everyone else. There is no promotional deal with this. So here's what I did. I took a one gallon sized Ziploc bag. I cut it open and I trimmed off the sides to make it longer. And then I just used that to fill the trough. Now the bees won't smell it. They can't taste it. They can't stick their tongues through there. You might have a much better looking way of dealing with that. But for me, putting plastic on there is going to take care of it. So if you need the pollen that your bees are collecting, get a pollen trap, use it for short periods of time, and find out what you need to know or add it to your diet, whatever you want to do. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you benefited from this video.